This episode of Gamerheads is brought to you by Magic Mind, the healthy energy drink that will help you take your creativity to a new level. Hi, I'm Celia Schilling from Yacht Club Games. Hey, this is James from Mega Cat Studios. Hey, this is Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon, from Reignite, Screen Snark, and the Fun and Games podcast. This is Stephanie from the Boss Rush podcast and the Boss Rush Network. Hey, this, this is Mark, Mark and Keon from Bonta Affold. Hey, this is Sebastian with the ProNerdReport.com and the Single Player Experience podcast. Hi, this is Chris. Mike. And Garrett from Daylight Basement Studio. Hey, this is Baron J67 from Level 1 Gaming. Hey, this is Todd Mitchell from Code Right Play. Salutations. This is Mike Carroll from Stroll Art. Hey, this is Jeff Moonen from Fun and Games Podcast. Hey, this is Patrick from the Backlog Odyssey. Hey, this is Rune from Runic Codes. Hi, this is Andrew from Spalato Bros. Hi, everyone. Jill Grote here from The Indie Informer. Hello, this is the Crypt Master, and you're listening to Roger Ragge. Rich here. You're listening to Roger on the Gamer Heads podcast. And welcome to another episode of the Gamer Heads podcast. My name is Roger. Along with me are my good friends and co-host. I have the CEO and president of Gamer Heads, Phil. The champ is here. The champ is here, is what you said? Uh, yeah, I was going to say the president is present, but it didn't quite sound as fun, so oh. I went with the champ is here. Okay. Well, welcome, Phil. Welcome to the Thanks show. Thanks for having me. Uh-huh. And, of course, we have a good friend and co-host. We have Mike. Are we doing wrestling quotes to start the day? Yes. Okay, then everybody has a price. Oh, that's a good cut. That is a good cut. Uh, <laughs> Cam, then the pressure is on you. Of course, we have we have a good friend and co-host, not co-host, but uh, a guest this <laughs> week. I have Cam Hawkins, who is from uh, a PR marketing manager at Apogee, uh, a freelance host and Kingdom Heart fan. Probably the biggest fan I know, right, Cam? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would say people <laughs> online know about my uh, my love for Kingdom Hearts and uh, the Legend of Heroes series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W, don't you have tattoos of Kingdom Hearts? Don't you have it? I do. I yeah. do have one. Okay. I do have okay. one. Yes. Yeah. I'm Walk actually them. getting a second tattoo next week. Oh, yeah. Kingdom Hearts the... related or? No, it's Legend of Heroes related. Oh, so. it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A podcast exclusive. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you just I decided right now. I haven't, I haven't tweeted. I haven't tweeted about it. I wasn't go. going to until like I posted the picture of it. So yeah, you got you the exclusive here. Scoops. Well, Cam, welcome to the show. Before we get started, tell us about yourself because I think your journey is an interesting one. Can you talk about a little bit about yourself and your the journey that you've gotten into games? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess the first way I would kind of, uh, I've always like loved video games, you know, um, and as long as I can remember. And um, I went to college initially for uh, music education. I was uh, oh, really? a saxophonist, and like, I um, I really just like didn't have anything else that was like really interested me like i put a lot of my uh time and effort into music in high school and so i was like yeah i'm gonna do music education uh because again i just didn't really feel like doing anything else and like after my first semester i was just really overwhelmed and didn't Mm -hmm. feel like um it was for me and so i decided to go into uh journalism uh and i was interested in like uh either film or games journalism uh because i i love film just as much as i love games um i wouldn't uh, i would say games are a little bit higher but i love i love film um too and uh and uh yeah and then i got more involved with like online gaming communities um and i was just like man i really like want to do this but it also felt like um just a really tall task like you just it felt like you really had to like know the right people or just get really really lucky um i've had like throughout the years because i started in 2019 uh throughout the years i've had so many people like dm me ask me like yo like do you have any advice for me this that or the other and i told them i'm like y'all like 75 percent of it is luck like seven like 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 such a majority of it is just 
get being at the right place at the right time and that is uh what happened with me where like i i um i ha- i was in the kind of funny facebook group and one of the uh admins at the time or one of the members in the group i forgot which um their partner was the editor in chief at dual shockers oh, okay and so i basically like got in touch with them and you know we talked i told them like oh yeah i have like you know i, I have a journalism degree i told them that like you know all the, all, all these they're asking like about like my uh opinions on games and things like that and then we like uh and then yeah they gave me a uh a freelance like gig there and uh it was a really great uh site like I there are people that I know that worked with uh dual shockers and friends that like didn't that now do. Yeah. Um that I I'm not trying to like talk down about the state of dual shockers now but at that uh but at that time it was very like be, it was meant to be like your baby steps, like your first mm. steps to like build yourself and then go to another site, mm. right? And and thrive at a bigger site. And I think that idea for that site was really really great um it allowed people to kind of do what they wanted write what they wanted and and uh we found success there um but then the uh the site was bought by a company i don't remember its name uh, its full name and then we kind of had like not everyone again but like uh, we basically had a mass exodus where a bunch of us were like the site's not going to be this what it was and we don't really vibe with that so a bunch of us left yeah um and uh then i uh did freelance for the longest time and uh surprise like surprisingly enough i don't even want to say like surprisingly it's more like begrudgingly (laughs) the pandemic was a huge boon for me really and like yes a huge boon like because everyone was working at home And that led to just like a lot more opportunities for Mm. people that didn't live in SF or LA or all, you know, any of these uh, major cities to go on these major podcasts. So like I, you know, got to go on inside gaming during uh, uh, the week for black history month that they did. Um, uh, I, I I think it was during that time. And then, um, there uh you know i got asked by ryan mccaffrey over at ign to like go on podcasts unlocked a few times and then like destin uh went on uh maternity leave and um and uh uh, ryan wanted me to fill in for him Hmm. like temp like you know so i was like a permanent temporary co-host on podcast unlocked which was crazy yeah like like, you know like uh and i still like to this day like it's one of those things where and i get it because i'm all i was also like i was also there and i am still there to a certain (laughs) extent but like when you see like when you like talk to someone like or interact with someone in person that you like look up to you think that they're just like the hottest shit and i'm just like guys (laughs) i'm just i'm just a dude yeah i'm just a dude like please don't like please like i appreciate compliments like i'm terrible at taking them and like you know (laughs) but like let like let's chill let's like let's just hang you know what i mean like i'm just some guy and yeah. um and so i just um it, it was just really cool like how like supportive everyone was and like and again like a lot of people like reaching out to me asking for advice and again it was just a lot of it's a lot of like luck based and it's a lot of other people hyping you up yeah that that gets you to where to to these type of opportunities yeah like, yeah you just have to have people back you um it was actually interesting. Uh, at PAX West two years ago, I interviewed Reggie Fizeme. Oh which wow! Was crazy, yeah, crazy, yeah. Um, and you know, I asked him kind of about like being a person of color in the industry and like things like that. And in his book, I don't know if you've read his book. Yeah, I did. But in his yeah. book, he talks about like you need to have people talking about you when you're not in the room. Yeah. And if you like, that's like one of the big things to like get you to these type of uh, situations. And so I think that that during the pandemic did a lot for me. Mm. Um, And so I'm 
uh, I'm very grateful and, and, and thankful about that. And then, yeah, I did like some, I did some freelance writing for IGN, wrote some reviews, did mainly did previews. Um, cause I would go to events that IGN doesn't normally go to cause they really only cover game wise now SGF. Yeah. Like when it comes to packs, yeah. things like that, anything, not almost anything that comes out of those shows are from freelancers. Yeah. They're from people that like, just like reach out saying like, Hey, like there's these games here. Do you want me to do a preview on any of these? That type of thing. Um, and I think another big thing that people, this is just like my general advice, um, is that if there's anything that you want to do, just ask, mm. just like literally if just ask mm. and you would be surprised how many times they'll say yes. Mm. Or how few times they'll say no. Hmm. Uh, and even in, even in the times when they say no, they know who you are now. They will remember you and they'll think about you when something that comes across their table or whatever that they think you're going to be a good fit for. Hmm. Um, so like there's never been an instance where I was told no on something that I didn't get that they didn't come back to me later for something else. Wow. Wow. And it's just like one of those things where I think that and I, and I know that like things have been a lot more dire since then, especially in the like byline written journalism <laughs> side of things. Yeah. But like, that is the best thing you can do. That yeah. is just like, say who you are, what you do. Hey, I'm, I'm looking to do this, this, that for you. Like, is there any, is there any opportunities you have for me and go from there? Nice. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And then, um, outside of that, I freelance host sometimes. Uh, I got something in the works with that actually, which is really cool. Nice. I can't say what it is yet. Um, it hopefully will be announced. This is it week. a tattoo? I, I, I actually, it'll be announced tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a it's a hosting gig. It's a hosting gig. Um, I'm right. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm writing a book for um for limited run games about kingdom hearts yeah with uh alexa ray korea who wrote the boss fight book yeah that's really cool so that's really yeah that's really cool um i'm doing a podcast unlocking kingdom hearts it's basically just like a kingdom hearts book club where we talk about each game and it's like me alexa jonathan dornbush used to be like the kingdom hearts guy at ign yeah and then kevin diaz um who also does stuff with ign now and he has a youtube channel playstation source and uh he's the newbie so like mm. basically he's the newbie we're all replaying the series and then we're like all kind of just talking about yo like what we like about this game what we don't like about this game like thing does this game hold up from from the veteran perspective like for a newbie like how does this feel playing it the first time in 2023 2024 and things like that mm. and so um that's basically uh what that podcast is um we have a few more episodes left we're getting some close to the end there but uh yeah and then um and that's about it that's that's like kind of like my my whole whole spiel i've done other like smaller things too right now i'm like contribute i would say like i'm a contributor but like it's really just working with khalif over at spawn on me like we i go on the podcast we we talk um every uh now or so like i'm going to sgf next week to to do all that stuff um yeah so that's me nice cam uh thank you for joining us uh i i do in the future want to have you come back on and sell me on kingdom hearts because i have not played kingdom hearts and it's okay (laughs) okay (laughs) so i'd have you on sometime and i'm gonna have you sell me on why i should play kingdom hearts so uh no it does interest me and every time like i'm like okay i'm gonna do it this time i'm gonna get into it and then i don't know like other games get in my way um but i will i will get into it so this kind um, of shocks me roger with you being the big rpg guy you are i know and i mean i like you know i like mickey mouse and donald duck i mean i do it's not like you were trying to convince yourself <laughs> yeah no kidding us. you're like <laughs> I like RPGs and Mickey Mouse. No, I do. I, Donald's no. okay. I have, I have, listen, I have Roger, Disney Infinity characters. Put your goofy whole, tattoo away, whole, Roger. Put it away. Whole, <laughs> that's a, that, yeah. That, no, I have all these Disney Infinity characters. Like, I love Disney Infinity, by the way. That was such a cool concept and such a cool game. But no, I'm a huge I, Disney fan. I never played Disney Infinity. I like, okay. I, I was like, okay, this is, you know, uh, I don't know. It just never really, 
That was like, the I, Toys with Bob mm, game or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, it, it was basically like Disney like, Skylanders. Yeah, yeah. It was like yeah, Disney yeah. Skylanders. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> it was a cool concept. I think the thing that they ran into was, again, obviously the, you know, Amiibos still survive, but that didn't survive. And then the other thing was, I think the thing that killed it was uh, Disney Infinity 2 was on new systems. So, like, the original one was on, like, PlayStation 2, and then a PlayStation 3, like, you had to get PlayStation 3 to get the thir- third one. Mm. And and the people that are buying this game were not, <clears throat> they're not like me that own all the <laughs> different systems. Like, I, I actually remember seeing on a so, couple forums, like, people, parents complaining, like, why do I have to upgrade my system to continue to play this game? That's a racket. I hate it. Blah, blah, blah. Which is too bad, because it was a, it was a cool concept. The Star Wars ones are really cool. The, the the Marvel ones are pretty cool too, so okay, um, yeah. But I have, I have, I have Donald and Mickey. They're like looking right at me. Nobody's Maybe. doubting you, Roger. Calm okay, down. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I, You're getting very defensive anyway. here, Roger. Uh, well, welcome are to those, the show. Yes. I'm actually gonna. I was actually gonna ask: Are those yeah. expensive now? Are those figures expensive now that like, or is it just like, uh, are they are they are they dirt cheap? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm on it. I don't think they're. I think they're hard to. F- Find, some of them are hard to find. I don't yeah. think they're expensive. They're not like amiibos. Like if you didn't buy them, yeah, good luck trying to find them again. And then if you I do mean, find them, they're really. Expensive. I think Nintendo's been pretty good about reprints, actually, of the past uh, year or so. Yeah, I was gonna say recent, right? Like they've been pretty good with that. But yeah. it looks like um, certain Infinity figures are expensive, but like which not ones? all of them. Which ones? Oh, which ones? Boy, man. <laughs> which ones? I just typed in Disney Infinity and kind of went from there. Yeah, like some of these are like dirt cheap, like Obi Wan's ten dollars. Okay. Yeah, uh, they go for anywhere between four and four hundred dollars. Let's put it that. Wait, way. wait, wait, oh. wait. What, what's the four hundred dollars? <laughs> What are the four hundred dollar ones? I want to see if I have those. I probably don't. If I do, then I'm gonna I'm gonna say, see, wife, look at this is why I collect these things. <laughs> uh, it was a funny story about that though. Quick, when I when we had some work done in our house, we had a plumber come in, and he walked through my office because he had to get to the area uh, we need to work through my office, and he said, "Oh, is this the <laughs> is this the kids' room?" My Wait, wife said, so, "No, this is my so, wait, husband's office." Yeah. So that Mickey, so that Mickey Mouse one, is it just like the OG Mickey Mouse style, or no, is it a different style? He's like Fantasia. The fa- oh, okay. Because yeah. if you had like the OG Mickey Mouse, yeah. that's like five hundred. Whoa! No, yeah, I there's don't a have Peter Pan one. one that's going for like four as well. Okay, I don't have Peter Pan either. Wow. Apparently, it was unreleased. I was actually looking, oh. yeah, I just looked into that, but yeah. So no, I don't have those. I think. I feel like some of the Pirates of the Caribbean ones might be kind of hard to find too. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, but I didn't. I mean, I made and what was cool about that game is you can make levels in that game, like, and I made levels for my kids to play. It was really fun. It was a cool game, cool concept. Um, all right. Well, also I should shout out to our patrons, uh, Sarah, Jill, and Matt. Thank you so much for uh supporting Gamerheads. And listener, if you wish to support Gamerheads, you can do so as well for as low as $3 a month. You can support the Gamerheads Nation. Go out to our patreon.com slash Gamerheads, uh, where you can support us there. Uh, and your money helps us have this show going for $3. That's a dollar per person. Sorry, sorry, Cam, we don't have any money for you. But uh, but for us three, we have a dollar a month. So... <laughs> Hey, that's a dollar, you know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Money is money. Game game is game. That's right. Uh, So, Mike. You're a busy person. You're a busy person. No, that's (laughs) not. That's a different different segment. Yeah, that's a different bit. Mike, you have an icebreaker for us this week? Yes. uh, So, this icebreaker is for Cam. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. Just for Cam. Nobody else. Right. You have 30 seconds to give us the entire Kingdom Hearts lore. (laughs) <laughs> in the beginning there was 30 Echo. seconds is impossible that's in, that's actually impossible yeah. the micro machines guy completely disagrees yeah. yes <laughs> um i'll tell you what take as long as you need and then we'll just speed you up and post <laughs> do you actually want me to do this no 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 i'm joking <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> You looked so defeated, Cam. Yeah. Even like, no, I'm just like, like it's just like, like y'all this. wouldn't be sitting here for like ten minutes at least. Like you, 
<laughs> and that's just for the that's just for the mandatory stuff. Like right? that's not even Chapter like the one. side stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? Uh, what what have we got ourselves into? Okay, right, um, what's, what's your icebreaker? So uh, over the weekend, uh, I got myself a table at a Ooh. video games convention and liquidated a good portion of my games collection and gaming memorabilia collection. Uh, so after, you know, on my drive home and everything and my day of relaxation today, I thought of a great icebreaker. And that icebreaker is this. What games that you got rid of do you regret? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Or anything video game related that you regret selling, getting rid of, etc. The first thing that comes to my mind, and it's because it's like relatively recent, as in like past five years, is that I sold my all? It was like it's like complete white. It was like pearl white, I think. The pearl white 3ds XL, new oh. new 3d, the new 3ds XL. Oh. It was like it is still my favorite model, and it was only being sold through. Um, it was like a um, SAE or whatever, you know, like that that area that, that that region of 3ds games that like works on US systems. Yeah. It was like that type of model or something wow. like that. And so I was just like, and I bought one. And I had it for a long time, and I just decided I was like, oh, I'm probably not going to use my 3ds anymore. And I sold it. And then when I realized, oh no, I need a, I'm like, I'm trying to build a 3ds library again. Yeah. Um, I looked it up, and like the cheapest one I could find was for a grand. And I was Oof. like, because like once, yeah, because I don't know what it is about the 3ds specifically, but really, no matter what model you get, like if you're getting a new uh 3ds or whatever it's outrageously expensive for a new one like if you want to get a new one really? uh and that was like five that was like four or five years ago wow. i can't even imagine like what it is now wow um i ended up buying like it was like a yellow pikachu one and even that one i paid way more than i wanted to but because i'm just like one of those guys like i'm one of those weirdos where i would rather pay more money to get something new then like save money and get it pre-owned when it comes to yeah. like electronics or yeah, games yeah. or like things like that me too um so like like just recently because i'm playing through uh we'll talk about it a little bit later i guess but like i'm playing through the dragon quest series for the first time okay and so i just finished the first three that were on switch and the only way that you can play four five and six outside of mobile which i don't play games on mobile is the ds mm. And and those games are so expensive. <laughs> like for, really? for for a single game, yeah, like they're they're really expensive. Like huh. I think I think uh, on the low end, one of them was like one fifty or one forty. Oh oh and my then gosh. like if you're and this is new specifically, it might be a little bit cheaper if you get it pre owned. But like yeah. even so, like that's still ridiculous. Yeah. And then like uh, I th I think like Dragon Quest Five alone was like was trying to sell for like 250 or something oh like that wow and i was just like that was that is that's insane yeah but eventually like and so i eventually like just saved up because i had i was like i, I gotta do it one where because i yeah. waited i waited years i waited at least three years um because because i was like checking the prices consistently for about three or four years and during that time i'm like y'all like square enix like get these things on the switch because you did the first three on the switch and those are the mobile versions of the switch uh the mm. uh, the switch versions they're ports of the mobile versions so i'm like why can't you do that for four through six and they just never did it and so mm. i just i just decided i was like i'm just gonna save up the money to be able to get them and so like i don't have them like right next to me but uh they're over there and i'm like i really hope that within the next two or three years they do not like, they do not port those now now yeah. i'm being gatekeeping now yeah. i'm like yeah. no don't do it i already <laughs> spent all this money yeah um so yeah it um yep wow didn't was dragon warrior am i wrong was dragon warrior dragon quest is yes. that that same was thing. Okay. same thing yeah well this is not this is not something that I sold, but I wish my parents would have listened to me when I told them that we could have got Dragon Warrior for free with our subscription to Nintendo Power. Yeah, they didn't my believe mom, me. My mom wouldn't believe me either. 
She refused to believe yeah. me that we could get Dragon Warrior for yeah. free. I bet you your parents said the same thing to me. There's no such thing as a free game. It's not free. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, it is free. If you order a year subscription, you get this game for free. And then my friend got it. And he's like, look, I got Dragon Warrior. And my dad was like, oh, I guess I guess there is a free game. Oh, he, I was so mad. I'm still mad. I'm still angry my, right now. I remember specifically sitting in the kitchen listening to my mom argue with the person on the phone at the Nintendo power 800 number. <laughs> yeah. She's like, so you're trying to tell me like, she's trying to tear the, she's, she was like the prosecutor or something with a witness on the stand. <laughs> she's just like, just real. And she's like, and then finally she's like, all right, if that's what it is. Yeah, we'll get it. I was like, yes, you got it. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, I didn't, my oh. parents didn't believe it. They were just like, no, that's, that's not true. That's well, not my parents. thing. My parents were kind of the same. Like they were really bad about like uh growing up, like I knew at a certain point, I knew that at the very least I was getting the new Pokemon game and the new Kingdom Hearts game if they came out. Like I knew yeah. that my parents would like knew that I cared about those games. But like anything else, they were just like, What's this game? Like, what's this game? <laughs> like like up until I don't know, probably like until I, until like the 360 era when I was like old enough to like do everything myself. Yeah, yeah, like they were just like, "What's this game about? Like, is there vi- is there like violence in it or like things like that?" But <laughs> and I would say like, and I, even if I said like yes, it would still end up getting it for me. It's like, why'd you ask me that? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, my, my see, I grew up at a time where like my parents didn't even know that video games could be violent. Until they saw Mortal Kombat. They're like, whoa, uh-huh. what is this? But by then I was already in high school. I'm like, well, what are you going to do? I mean, this is no different than like after school activities. So, yeah, a, my mom, like, joke. you had people ripping each other's hearts out after school. That was a joke. That was a joke. Oh, that's sad. But it's no different than Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, where, you know, gets his heart ripped off. So, except yeah, you're not in like, control though, of it. Well, it's true. Even, we're, ta- we're talking about this earlier, but my mom's British. Yeah. And even though she's British, you think that like British is like basically just like another like in the sense of like knowing pop culture and things like that and knowing just like the kind of regular things that we think are completely normal in day to day. She is very much a foreigner still. Like she's like, oh. what's this? What's that? Like she doesn't know. Like <laughs> she's like, I try to show her Hamilton and she yeah. like she's she's the only person that <laughs> I've sh- like I've made or or like convinced to watch Hamilton yeah and she she hated it because she didn't understand anything she has no American <laughs> history she's like right. she's like I was like do you know who George Washington is and she's yeah, like he's a fucking traitor <laughs> <laughs> I was like yeah I don't know and she's like no I don't know who that is and I'm like the first president of the United because she never got her citizenship so she, oh, she sells okay. a green card and everything like that okay so like I'm just like the first president of the United States and she's like it's like bro everyone should know yeah this. yeah 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 well i mean um, but, yeah. but i mean do they teach it i mean maybe they teach a different side of history in, in england absolutely like, oh yeah oh yeah they, they just do. glaze over that well that then and then we moved on from that we let them have their little island and and we let them do their own thing i i actually <laughs> i know this is a video game podcast but i actually <laughs> asked my mom like more about what her curriculum was when she mm. was in school yeah um and i know that like during primary school like they uh, very they instead of like the two years like they very much were like into learning a second language and mm. things, things that america should be doing things yeah, that america yeah. Should be doing. yeah yeah but uh yeah so um they definitely had different curriculum and stuff but like yeah it, it it really is like one of those things where she's like very just not aware about a lot of stuff in america still yeah. being yeah. like here since i was what for 28 years now she's been in wow. Amer- in america so wow oh, that's funny uh well can I, i'll 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 say my thing that i'm sad that i sold well and I, I it's not even something i sold can i can i go can i talk about the thing that well, i didn't even have control over it a Did game you that it? you game yeah any kind of gaming thing that you once had once had yeah but no longer have and okay it so it doesn't me. have to be a game right it can be like related though right i, I mean as it's, long as it's yeah. gaming i mean i'll okay. interrupt you if i don't like what you're saying <laughs> oh okay <laughs> uh so when i was a kid there was a legend of zelda board game and this mm. thing was really cool and right now like it sells for like two three hundred dollars uh and my mom was like, didn't even ask. She was like, oh, these kids probably don't want this anymore. And she sold it for 10 cents at a grummet sale. Hmm. 
And it was, it was if you ever look it up, it's Mil- Milton Bradley made this game, which is crazy to me to think this. But it was like an adventure board game where you had hearts and you had to punch all these little hearts and then you had to like move. And... I kind of remember that actually now that you say that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. And you had to go into the different areas. There was like different areas on the map and you had to go get all the different pieces for the tri. It was cool. It was such a cool game. Um, <clears throat> and and that game and then there was another game that I had. I had uh, Raiders of Lost Ark board game that my mom sold for a nickel. But my wife actually bought that on on eBay for me uh, for one Christmas. But the the Zelda game was too expensive, so um, so I I and I still haven't seen it. I wish I wish I went back to my hometown because there was a there was a toy store that like wouldn't reshelve anything or they would restock anything. They just pulled a stock from like the nineteen nineteen eighty two, and I was hoping that maybe it was stuck back there somewhere, but it wasn't. So, but I did get I, um... Fireball Island from there. So. I'm looking at it right now, and there's like someone selling a used copy that like isn't even. Apparently, it's mostly complete yeah. for a hundred and fifty dollars. Ugh, yeah, yeah. That that's, makes me sad. <laughs> Although you know, by fire, I have the original Fireball Island, and that's worth like five hundred bucks. And my wife is like, "Well, are you going to sell it?" And I said, "No." And then she said, "Well, then it's not worth anything." Like, <laughs> I don't know what that game is. So I would just say if I had that game, yeah. a game I, I do not care about or know about, that's yeah. five hundred dollars. Yeah. I would just sell that to get a physical copy of Earthbound. Because that is also five hundred dollars. <laughs> that is that is also five hundred dollars. <laughs> you have to if you played Fireball Island, you would say, Oh my goodness, I don't I that game is amazing. Anyway. Like mousetrap. No, it's oh, not okay. it is nothing like it is not like mouse trap. It's like sorry. It's not like sorry. It's Mixed not with mouse no, trap. It's not. It is like not. Sorry trap. It is like not sorry any of mouse. those. No, it's not. It's not like that at all. It is a 3D board game. Like we have these trap. little adventures. No, it's not like mouse trap. Yeah, mouse trap has nope. a 3D board. Oh game. my god. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Phil, you answer this question next. I am a hoarder. So you haven't sold anything. Same. I really haven't lost much of anything throughout my lifetime. Um, small handful of NES games when I was a kid, but I don't think any of them are really worth anything. I'd say I wish I still had my old NES, but that thing broke, so that doesn't do me any good. Um, I had an Oddworld cutout that I wouldn't mind having behind me right now from when Oddworld originally launched. Mm. I Yeah, I haven't lost much of anything throughout the course of my life as far as video games go. So it's not a loss, but it is like just... I'm still devastated about it. Like to this day, it's been four years later and I'm still devastated. Um, but so my, you know, my dad, uh, uh, not COVID related, but my dad passed away in 2020. No. So we were cleaning out my, my bedroom, my childhood bedroom. And I knew, cause I was already like, it was already in my mind that the next time I went down to, 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 to their house, I was going to pick up my complete copy of, pokemon soul silver like with the box oh. the poke walker Ooh. everything and yeah. the box was in perfect condition that's, like that's no funny. dents no dents at all and so i have everything packed up and i like so i put it on the back seat and i put like this i took like a blanket with me or something put that over it and then i put something heavy on top and i oh, didn't no. realize it oh no and when i and when and when i pulled it out dude there's like i i, I have it the like you really like if you just like glanced at it, you would think it would be in perfect condition. But yeah. if you like took a second to look at it, there's just like this giant like bend on the top oh, now. No. And I was like, I was grieving two two different ways. Let me. <laughs> I, was, I was grieving in two different ways. I was like, this is devastating. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that that sucked. I just had to talk about that story because that I still think about it. I'm just like, because I kind of have it on display over here. Yeah, it's like you see the starters right there. Oh right yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, I got my oh, and I found my OG Pokemon Crystal Box, the oh. best Pokemon game, the best Pokemon game right there. <clears throat> so how mad were you? How mad at yourself were you when that happened? Like, did you like? I mean, I was already <laughs> again, I was already grieving <laughs> like a, a much more serious matter. Yeah, and so yeah. I was just like, I was devastated, but like I was already so emotionally distraught yeah. that I just, like it didn't really change anything. Yeah. but I was also just like. Why did I do this? Like, if I could turn back time. Was it one of those like, well, of course it's just happened right now. Why wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, what about you? One day, 
back in 2006. Yes, story time with Mike. Yeah. Was it 2007? Somewhere around that. I was with a buddy of mine, and, uh, oh, he had just hacked his OG Xbox. So we took a trip over to Blockbuster to rent a couple games that he could rip to the hard drive. (laughs) And I hadn't been to this Blockbuster ever. This was like probably, it was near his house, maybe about 20 minutes away. So we go to the Blockbuster, we're walking around, and uh, I see on the bottom shelf, amongst all the, the, what was it, PS2 and Xbox and GameCube games, a couple games on sale. One of those games was Castlevania Symphony of the Night. <laughs> on sale, not used, brand new, on sale for a dollar ninety nine. Along with Resident Evil Two, also a dollar ninety nine. I oh absolutely flipped. I flipped out, and I bought them both. Stupid me. A couple days later, opens Symphony of the Night, plays it for half an hour, and then a few months later trades it in at a local games shop oh no when you're a kid though like it's just oh mike wasn't a kid no, no, mike i wasn't a kid in 2007 oh. I, had already, I had already had my kid by 2007 <laughs> real yes i'm 44 okay i'm 44 you look damn good for 44 homie and he's the young one yep yeah he's the young one i'm the old one that's actually what we go by. I'm the old one. The <laughs> that's one. that's the nuts. <laughs> I just turned I just turned 30. And so oh. I'm like, yeah. Okay, you're the so, young one actually yeah, right now. So I thought I thought <laughs> like that's why I thought like, oh, you were like you're like a teenager. You no, know what no, I mean? I so so like <laughs> when you say that you're 44, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I thought you were like my age. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love how okay. I was like, you know, but when you're a kid and Mike's like but I wasn't. <laughs> that, was, that was his out. Oh, it's okay. You were kidding. Oh, no. Now I got no excuse. You're just an yeah, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I look as good as you at 44. Like, I already think I look young for my age, especially like especially if I didn't have like my beard and stuff. But like, yeah. I hope I look. I hope I look back. At well, thank you. I, that's, 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 I, what about 48? Do you hope you look this good at 48, Cam? Uh, Whoa! Damn, like, just no, 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 no. <laughs> I have no. I do th- crashed. No, 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 no. I do think. No, I genuinely. No, let, stop laughing because you're gonna. You're making me feel bad. And let me explain myself. <laughs> Cam's a nice guy. Everybody. Roger is prone to laughter. So <laughs> I, I think, I think you look great for forty. Mm, I mm. like again. Like if I asked, if I like, <laughs> if y'all made me guess your age. Before the before anything, I would not have gone that high for any of y'all. Like I, I wouldn't. So, uh, so like, yes, you technically, your forty-seven. But also, Roger, I'm just like, 47. I'm just yeah. saying that like Mike looks the youngest out of the three of y'all. So I want to look the youngest like, out of us. I know, no, I know, but I'm just saying in general, like he is, and I also think like uh, thought, I, and so like I want to look like oh, Mike oh. at, at that age. <laughs> That's yeah, the I'm point. Just I'm a hard to time. Nobody should ever want to look like me at 48. Nobody you should ever want to look like look me at any age. You look younger than 48, though. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Cam. Oh man, that is really funny. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it's fine. It's 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 okay. It's okay. Listen, it's a, I'm, I'm I'm saying that you look younger than 48. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all right. We'll take this out in post. Yeah, we'll yeah. take this all out in post. Uh-huh. No, you don't know. You don't have to, no, no, you don't have to take it out in post. <laughs> I don't take out anything in post. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <clears throat> Mike, if it makes you feel better, <sighs> any better, I still have my copy of Symphony of the Night as well as Resident Evil 3. Yeah, I appreciate that. Is it sealed? No, they're not sealed. They're oh, open. But... I did I get the uh, limited run to like a PS4, like the PS4 version of yep. Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood. I got the collector's edition for that. It's still sealed. It's like up there somewhere. But mm-hmm. yeah. Uh yeah. I I I want to like do a series playthrough of Castlevania oh. uh, sometime soon. That's there a is a new you should uh there is a new fan-made Castlevania game that is a Symphony of the Night-esque game with OG Castlevania graphics and I think gameplay. Okay. Um, I think it's called Castlevania Revamped. Okay. 
and it's 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 getting some pretty positive buzz. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out. It's free. So that's free. That's, that's, that's a fan free. game. That's good. Well, and I will but... regret this. One of the things I sold on Saturday was my uh, physical copy of Streets of Rage Two Simpsons Edition, Ooh. which which is a ROM hack of Streets of Rage Two, putting Simpsons arcade characters in there. I haven't mm. regretted it yet because I'm still kind of reeling from everything, but I think I will regret that soon. In I... the future, when you're selling your games, yes, you hit me up because I'm because there's a very real chance I might want to buy some stuff from. Well, if, if you let me know what you're looking for, I could let you know if I have it. I mean, I got. I'm rid looking of... for a lot, so it would probably be easier oh, for you okay, to tell just, me what you're selling. That's okay. That's yeah, that's fine. I I got rid of honestly. I got rid of a lot of my heavy hitters. Uh, River City Girls. Oh, uh, that's one of them. I oh no. <laughs> I have a friend, I have a friend in, in the, in Oakland and every time I'm like in the Bay area, I'll go to his place Mm -hmm. and he has like a sealed copy sitting there. I'm like, bro, what do I have to do to take this from you? (laughs) Like, and and, and he's like, I think I, like, I've, I've slowly been like knocking him down on it, Mm -hmm. but like, he still hasn't, he still hasn't let me buy it from him, but Ah. that is. That is a big one. That is a big one that I wanted. That, was yours yep, sealed? Somebody... Was yours sealed, Mike? Mine, no, mine was open. It was the Best Buy variant, but it was open. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and I sold that. I actually, I was able, and this one, this actually, this one made me happy. I was actually able to sell uh, my copy of Silent Hill um, that I got at GameStop a year ago. Yes, that's tr- that's 100% true. It was actually in a GameStop store. I, I bought it for 40 bucks. I sold it for 175. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I'm very happy and um, we can move on after this. I'm very happy because I have um Shantae and the Pirates Curse for Switch. Oh. That's like $500. Yes. Really? I do not yes. have. I never got that. That one. is the one Shantae game like that limited run did that is for some reason like wow. In, in insanely expensive. Yeah, they won't wow. reprint it. They reprinted all the other ones. They won't or they re- reprinted a lot of them, but no yeah, they don't. They, they reprinted uh, Half Genie Hero. Okay. Because that was published by X Seed initially. Okay. So that's true. Um, yeah. But yeah. But they did all the other ones, and it's just like it's so it was so uh it, I, I got it like I still got it like post market, so I still had to pay like more than I wanted to. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. like not, not not like that remotely yeah. in that range. Yeah. That's how I feel um, about Stranger Things the game. I, I, have Things. I, I I have Stranger regret Things. I regret not picking that up. I saw mm-hmm. that at Best Buy for like 30 bucks. I'm like, "Eh, I don't need it." And now it's worth like 200 because they delisted really? it. Really? Yeah, yeah, once I yeah, once I saw that it was being delisted, I'm like I immediately went to eBay. I'm like, "Okay, how much can I yep. how cheap can I get this?" Wow. So yeah. I, the only heavy hitter I didn't sell and then I'll stop. The only heavy hitter no, I haven't fine, sold yet fine. is Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 on the Switch. Oh shit, yes. I want that. I oh, want that. You? Okay. Talk, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll do it in post. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. Are in you post. can do it right now, and I'll just cut it out. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. do the negotiating on, on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> do I hear one? I'm 200, yeah. 250. <laughs> uh, and I take a cut of whatever you sell it for. Mike. You get a finder's fee. <laughs> yeah. You get yeah, a finder's fee. That's right. Fee. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay. cool. Well, that's that was a good icebreaker. Um, Let's move on to the games that are coming out next week. There's not a lot of games, at least like on my list. Maybe there's more and I'm just not aware of it. But here's the games that I have list- listed that are coming out next week. On the 4th of June, we have Destiny 2, The Final Shape for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S on- and PC on the 4th as well. Also That's on the 4th. Fourth- it is? No, it came out early if you pre-ordered it. Yeah. Oh. So it okay. officially comes so, so out you, this week. So you, you pre-ordered it, then, I'm assuming, Phil? No, it told me it was in the store, so I bought it. Oh, yeah. really? You still technically oh. pre-ordered it. You paid for it before the official release date. Oh, oh I yeah. won. Sure. There you go. Uh, Star Wars Hunters, which is actually a free game. I didn't realize that. That's uh, It's on the Switch, iOS, and Android. Phil, don't even say anything. Uh, and then Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is on iOS on the six. So, Assassin's Creed Mirage is on iOS. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Have they, have, have they been doing that? Putting I don't. Old, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it seems weird, right? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so anyway, I, I don't know. I need to. I need to play uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage. That was like what, like one of the few games of last year that I 
I norm I normally play like every Assassin's Creed at launch. Like that's one of my favorite franchises. Like I know people are like, oh, I'm tired of Assassin's Creed, and I'm like, I eat this shit up every year, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um but that one i i did not get to play um so i really want to play it before i uh before shadows comes out later yeah. this year yeah uh i, I mean i want to play star wars i mean i want to play star wars hunters i i don't know it's an arena shooter that's why it's free yes phil i know i know i know it's uh, weird that the android's the most powerful thing it comes out on <laughs> oh god here we go here we go uh but killer clowns obviously is one game that i really i want to play too i want to play with uh cam you're always welcome to join us too if we want to play uh you know four players i don't know if you're a big fan of those types of games cam i don't know i've heard that game i saw the i was gonna say like did you see the cosplayers at pax yeah 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 like i i saw like i I've seen and heard about it. I know nothing about what that game looks like or what the genre is or anything. Uh, oh, is... Think Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Think Friday the 13th. That's uh, the game. Dead by Daylight. Eh, dead, dead by Daylight. daylight. Oh, it's Dead by Daylight. Okay. Eh, it's fine. That's not my, not my thing. I don't like, yeah. I don't like games. I don't like horror games and things like that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. The cosplayers are pretty cool at Paxi. So I thought that was, that was pretty neat. And they had actually a really big like setup. Like it was a huge tent. They have a they've done a big marketing push for that game. Like I saw like merch for that at like GameStop the other day, and I'm like, oh really? Do people want this? Like, do people like are people gonna buy like a killer clowns from outer space like plush or toy or something like that? Like <laughs> us old folks will really? camp. <laughs> us old folks. Those of us that were alive when the movie came out, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I almost bought a two hundred dollar animatronic every Halloween for the last three Halloweens since it's been out. I love Killer Clowns <laughs> from Outer Space, man. Have you seen the movie, Cam? Have you ever seen the movie? Okay, okay. And this is it's like, with the I, podcast. Good stuff. It's, it's. I do not like horror stuff. So. Yeah, this is not it's scary. Not. It's, I don't no. like horror movies either, Cam. And I can watch this because it's, it's not scary. Straight. Cam. I mean, no. Here's the thing: if you think like we talked about this last week, if you think about what's actually happening to them. It's actually scary, but it's it's so campy. It's not scary at all. It's yeah, like it's designed. Oh, they, okay, it's directed on purpose to be a throwback to nineteen fifties. Um, you know, cheesy B horror movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, it's not scary. It's 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 like as scary as like Army of Darkness is scary. Like that's how scary it is. That's a good. But, that's a good. That's a good comparison, Roger. Yeah, uh, and I'm I love Army of Darkness. Roger saw a movie with darkness in the name. I mean, Darkness is one of my favorite movies. I'm just saying I'm surprised you've seen a movie with yeah. darkness in the name. That's all. Well, I, I, I don't like horror movies. You should I watch mean, Darkness Falls. If you're on a darkness no, kick, no, Roger, no, since you're on a darkness no, kick, no. Darkness Falls. That's a no, good one, too. It does not sound like a game movie I want to watch. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I don't know. Any other games that interest anybody here? I don't I I'm not. A, I kind of fell off the Destiny 2 bandwagon a while Man, back. I like. The thing is, it's just, I am, I don't know, like, if this happened to y'all at a certain age or whatever, but, like, I have just kind of um, changed my, where I'm willing to put my time and resources into a video, into video games. Yep. Um, yep. That, that, that was me probably during the pandemic, um, because, like, I, I, I talked about, I, like, talked about a little bit at the beginning of the podcast, but there's a series that I like love almost as equally as kingdom hearts now called the legend of heroes. Mm. And, uh, it's a very, it's a relatively niche JRPG series. Um, and it like, to me has like the best world building, the best like lore, like the best, like the most realized video game universe I've ever experienced. Um, and I, over that time, I've like put a lot of my, kind of hours into like playing games that are going to like tell me a story you know like 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 you're reading a book right like oh Mm -hmm. like that's like that's the thing i really go for like obviously i still want the gameplay to be good but it's i want to experience stories at the end of the day um and so i like outside of overwatch i i play overwatch all the time i still love overwatch yes yes sir um i just like can't put my energy into like multiplayer game like a- games anymore really i play fortnite too actually I-, I i like you know if 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 the skins in the battle pass or the event pass aren't like something that i care about then 
I just ignore until the next season. Yep. Um, but like in general, I still like keep uh, up to date on Fortnite and things like that. Um, but outside of those two games, I just I just don't really play. I, I really only play like single player story driven experiences now. Um, and I just like, yeah, I just I just uh, that's just kind of like where I'm at with my games uh, with my games right now. Um, I don't uh, and like with Destiny. I was like, where am I going with this? Uh, <laughs> with Destiny, I back on the 360 or like Xbox, early Xbox One or whatever, I uh, I was still, I was like just out of high school, like things like that. Like I was still, I didn't have like to have like a full-time job and, and, and all these things. I was in college, right? Like, and so I had time to like put towards Destiny. And like when they did that anniversary thing with Xbox, I found out that Destiny was my most played game. Mm. And I was I was I was shocked. Even though I know that I put a lot of time into it, I thought it was like Rock Band 2. Cuz Rock mm. Band 2 is like my my fourth favorite game of all time. Like I would like when I was actually in high school, like in my bedroom, I would just spend nights playing like, you know, uh Rock Band 2. And uh and I just like and I so I played like all of Destiny 1 and I was consistent to it like through it throughout and then I got to Destiny 2 and I played like the first, like the base stuff. But like after that, I just like, I just kind of fell off and I've never really felt a need to return. And like, as the conversations, I know that there are people that are still Destiny sickos and good on them. Oh yeah. But like, I just, they haven't been able to like convince me that it's something I need to hop back into in a real way. Unlike how people say like things about Final Fantasy 14, where I'm like, I gotta, under- I gotta know. I, what, what's the, what what is the secret sauce that Final Fantasy XIV is doing? I gotta understand. Yeah. Um. So I just like, I want to be excited about a new Destiny expansion, but I just, I just can't. I just can't. It, it, it sucks. Like I want to be happy, but yeah, I want to care. That's just where I am at life right now. I just gotta, you know, accept it. Cam, to that point as well, though, as you say, like the secret sauce of Final Fantasy. I feel like if you're an avid Overwatch player, as as I am. I, I feel like I get asked that question a lot. Like, what keeps you coming back to Overwatch? Oh, because, I mean, like, the gameplay is just, like, it, it never gets old. It's nope. just, like, a, I, I, yeah, I just I just love... Because even, even though, like, Overwatch is still technically a, um, like, arena shooter, mm-hmm. like, in a sense, it's kind of still its own thing, like, in a way that, like, valorant or uh those type of games uh that would kind of technically fit under the same umbrella as overwatch yep. aren't like if they're not like overwatch in that way for me and so i just like i just love like pushing the payload and like uh the the diversity in the characters um and there's just it, it, it it's a really frustrating thing because i actually was like talking with uh Khalif about it on the spot on me podcast uh, this past week that like the state of overwatch is uh has me worried yeah uh, both it's bleak inter- and dire yeah internally and externally yeah. too right because like with the xbox shutting down tango gameworks and like things mm. like that i'm like oh shit overwatch might be on the chopping block yep. like in a real way because you know I love over like I love Overwatch, but I'm I'm also going to be realistic when I say that like, out of all of what Blizzard's got going on right now, that's probably on the chopping block. You know that's a, that's the first thing to go. I and so um, I hope that that isn't the case. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actually do this, but um. If I like see see Phil Spencer in person next week, I'm going to be like, please don't kill Overwatch. (laughs) Yeah, whatever you do, man, (laughs) sir. I understand the player base numbers are down, and you feel it, especially when you're playing. And I'm not, I'm not a super high rank. I'm, I'm a mid to high silver, so like, I'm not that great at the game. But I just feel as though Mm -hmm. I see the same people coming through time and time again. And with load and search times being what they are as well, I feel like that's kind of a, a, a telling sign as well. And that's not even touching on the fact that I don't know what they're going to do for season 11 when season 11 kicks off and they laid off whatever percentage of the team that they laid off. Like this battle pass already feels weaker than the rest of them. Or I, yeah, I'm going to call it a battle pass, but it just, I'm, 
I'm very concerned that we might be looking at the end of Overwatch very soon, and that's seven years later, six years later. Yeah, I, I, I really, and the thing is, is like I think a big thing in, internally about the game is, and this has always been an issue about competitive Overwatch, where like you kind of get placed in a, uh, you know, you get placed. Like I'm also kind of like high silver, but I know I'm much better Absolutely. than a lot of the players that I am. I, I play with. Yep. But I, but I lose because I'm playing with incompetent teammates. Yep. And I'm not, it's not even like trying to be an asshole. No. It's just, this is just the case. And so like, cause if I play DPS, the support sucks. And I'm like, okay, let me play support. And, and then, then the, like, DPS the DPS sucks. sucks. You're suddenly looking like, at like a Hanzo with three kills and 17 deaths with like 20, with two grand in damage. And you've done more than that as a healer, like as a Zenyatta or a Lucio or somebody like that. Like, yeah, exactly. it's absolutely frustrating and infuriating. Or you get a yeah, tank that like, can't do a fucking thing. It isn't like playing a tank role. They're playing 50 feet in front of like where the objective is. It's, uh Yeah. Like I, I realistically think that like. I have some time from, to again, talk pre- Overwatch pre- with nerds. See you guys pre- later. Previous, previous, previous Overwatch experience, mm-hmm. like Overwatch 1, I should be like in Platinum. Yep. But I'm in, I'm in Silver 1. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I should be literally two tiers higher than this. Yeah. And it's just like, but it's just. It is what it is, and it, it's really frustrating. And th- again, like there are certain like like the tank role is even with the passive changes that they just made in the mid season update, not gr- not looking great. The nope. tank role is like the tank role is not fun to play right now. It's and not tank and tank was my favorite, like probably my favorite role to play. Probably not my best role, but like my favorite role. And now it's like I can't play like uh, I play Zarya and Reinhardt primarily. Yep. But I like to play Reinhardt because Reinhardt's just fun. I think Zarya is my best thing, but I just have fun playing Reinhardt in a in a different way. So I play Reinhardt a lot, but Reinhardt is by far the worst tank in the game right now, Absolutely. and he has been for a while. And so it's just like what? And now there's like this whole because because I, I don't know if uh I don't know if y'all know Mike and Roger, but the this is all switched... Greek to me. I'm not gonna okay. lie. <laughs> so 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 Overwatch was initially a six v six game. Okay. And in Overwatch two, they decided to drop one of the tanks and have it a five v five. And like their goal was that they wanted the game to be quicker. They wanted it to be mm. more offensive, more aggressive. Mm. Um. And initially, there was a lot of backlash, right? And at first, I was like, okay, let's see how the game goes, right? And while it took like seven or eight seasons, it's now starting to look like that. Yeah, they they might have fucked up. They might have mm-hmm. fucked up dropping that tank roll because the tank because like um there's we're just like in this place right now where if you're not playing like one or two of these like ten tanks that are available, you're almost like you know I'm being hyperbolic, but you're like objectively wrong. Mm-hmm. You're objectively wrong to play any other character. And so it's just like, what, what can you do to fix this? And like, and, and, and on top of that, um, because there's only one tank, uh, what people will do is that they'll pick the tank they want to play. And if they see like that, they're playing against a tank that counters them, they're immediately going to switch. And it's just like mm-hmm. them switching off of each other, the entire game. Yep. And it just, ru- it really ruins the flow of the game. Um, and so, yeah. And so it's just like, does, is Blizzard going to bring it back to a 6v6? Like, and this isn't even talking about all the other problems with Overwatch 2, like them canceling the PVE and yep. like a whole bunch of other stuff, which, and at this point, like, I'm mean, not even say at this point, I'm surprised they haven't done it like for years now. Where's our Overwatch show? Yeah. Give us an Overwatch show. They we, had the beautiful all, animated shorts in the early days and they just kind of dropped them. And those things were gorgeous and they were super well done. And it's all just yeah. like fallen to the wayside. I'm not even yes. mad about the PVE anymore. It's they kind of threw in that campaign mode or whatever that they gave us four or five maps for, and they haven't touched that since season four. And it's like, just give us one more of those a season, and I'll be okay with it. Well, that's what the PVE was. Right. And, the, and they and they canceled it. They said, look, we're not doing it anymore. And uh, and then they added the gauntlet thing, and then they got they stopped doing that, which I actually think is a good thing, because they said, no one's playing it. I'm yep. like, cool, stop doing it. Yep. Like, I want, th- I want you to put your resources in things that are going to make the game better. Um, but then they also did like the things where it's like, oh, so in Overwatch One, right? Uh, you would get in competitive, you get competitive points to get a gold skinned yep. weapon, right? And now they introduced this was it this season or last season, and anyway, 
they released the the next like special With weapon the jade. Skin, which is the jade right yep but they introduced a new currency so you can't use any of your legacy currency on the jade or the uh and you can't use the new currency on the gold if you have like you can't mix and match so i so i have like for me because you need three thousand credits yep to or competitive points to get a gold weapon or a jade weapon i have over two thousand legacy uh competitive points that i just can't use yep I, I literally cannot use them because you can't they won't let you mix and match so because like i'm not crazy about the jade skin so i'm just getting more gold weapons right now right but still it's just like i could have gotten uh a gold weapon and almost halfway to my next gold weapon by now if they let me mix and match but i don't know it's it's like a whole bunch of issues with overwatch and i really but i love that game so much and i really want uh that game to be successful but there's just like a lot of again a lot of reasons both in and outside of the game that uh has uh me worried and it seems like phil's on the same page i'm definitely on the same page and i can tell you with a high level of certainty that anybody that i play with is also very concerned about it also, Roger, yeah. Mike, sorry for opening that can, but uh, I don't ever have anybody to talk Overwatch with on this show, and I just have <laughs> that's somebody that's so true. And that's like, true. that's the game that I devote most of my time to. It's either that or MLB The Show. So, I mean, and MLB yeah. The Show is just my mindless wind down, and Overwatch time is Overwatch time. I play every night for at least an hour, hour and a half a night, and I grind on it, and I don't ever have anybody to talk about it with. And yeah. thank goodness I've got, I've got Cam here that I could kind of vent, and yeah. we can go back and forth for a second. Yo, but. yo, we can... We can uh, get the information. We can squat yeah, up. I'm down. I'm down. Wow, this is. I, I know what you feel like now, Phil. When when I talk about Nintendo stuff. I sorry, I just muted you. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> no, but but you know, it's interesting actually to tie into it because I don't play Overwatch. Okay, but to tie into it, uh, last week was the state of play, and that Concord game. I was going to ask because it looks to me a lot like Overwatch. I could be wrong, You're but right. that. I think I think people yeah. are comparing it more to um to like Destiny or um or something like of that does that kind of sphere of things oh, of, really? of a live action game. Yeah. But isn't which it is isn't we, it which squad is weird, versus squad? It, isn't it? Yeah, it is a yeah. 5v5 squad. hero shooter. Yeah, yeah, but that's like comparing hockey or football to soccer because they both have 11 people on the field. I mean, just cuz it's squad versus squad doesn't mean that it's the same game. <laughs> yeah because i mean like that's and that's what i was kind of saying like what makes overwatch so special is that like there are games that are definitely like in uh inspiration of overwatch mm-hmm. like paladins. paladins yeah paladins, oh, yeah, yeah, paladins. Yeah. uh predecessor just came out overwatch vibes there uh but... the one that also uh oh hell the company that does all of the that does the borderlands game just put out one to or re-released gearbox. a gigantic oh okay. yeah gearbox just re re-released uh gigantic yeah. And that's got the and same also, Overwatch vibes to it. And they're also doing a Marvel style Overwatch game as well. That it's just like, what do you Yeah, guys oh yeah. Doing? Marvel yeah. Rivals Marvel is Rivals. straight up just Marvel Overwatch. Yeah. yeah. Like see that I'll even... play that. I'll play that. I uh yeah, I'm really excited to check that out. But like here's the thing. If you like Marvel Rivals, you should play Overwatch. Absolutely. Because <laughs> Overwatch is gonna be better. Oh, it's it's, like it. The gameplay is super tight in it. The problem is that the support in the community are just not there like they used to be, is what yeah, the yeah. vast majority of the problems here's are. Here's the thing. If I play I'm going to be that, oh, great, I have to carry that guy because that guy's shit. That's why I'm going to be that that guy. guy That's why you play with friends. That's why you play with friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, friends aren't going to shit on you for it. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, like, I'm not going to say, like, yo, you sucked that game. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm going to... I mean, I might, but I'm going to get some pointers in the process. But, like, if someone... If uh, it seems that you're dying a lot from a a specific character, I'm going to say, like, Hey, you should consider changing characters. Mm-hmm. Like you should like or like it, you know, cuz I, I play with um my buddy Ken Shepard, he's a writer over at Kotaku. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he mainly plays um oh fuck. Oh, another thing I want to talk about. They need to like they need to nerf Sombra into the ground, dude. Oh god, yeah. I hate that character so uh, I I used to love OG like build yep. Sombra. She was so interesting and like t- tact like I like char- using characters that like they have a, um, a like they're their floor for their skill like like it's high you know what i mean yep. like 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 zarya and like sombra like original sombra anyway um and so um what what was i oh yeah yeah 
Wait, 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 what was I talking about before You were that? talking about how you play with your friends and they don't, and yeah, you yeah, give yeah. them hits. So, like, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. he plays, so he plays Soldier and Sombra, right, a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then there's sometimes where, like, he, or uh, uh, there's sometimes that, like, he's dying a lot as Soldier and it's like, hey, like, uh, I don't think a Soldier may not be working for you this game. You know, there are ways to, to, to say, like, yep. hey, like, try to mix thing, like, try to uh, make a change or something um, in a nice way and without being an asshole. Well, or, yeah. Especially if you can like see that. that, like, the style of play that they're implementing that match is not fitting the style of play for that character. You can kind of, like, redirect them, like, hey, dude, instead of Soldier, since you're getting up close and personal, go play as a Reaper or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. you can give yeah. those small nudges in those directions as to, of like, what you're doing right now as far as your, men your mental state goes for how you're playing it's not working with who you're playing as. Yeah, and like normally, like for me, I play my two primary DPSs are Ash and Pharah, right? Yep. So I I'll play Ash, right? But then if I am like struggling, it, it, but I'm like not 100 percent sure, I'll say like I'm thinking about switching to Pharah after I use this ult, and that gives my teammates mm. to, that I'm playing with to say that's a good call, or I think you're fine, or you know, like yep. Like to get to get some input, <laughs> maybe try that. ducking covering yeah. a little bit more, or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you vocalize exactly. those types of things, you'll usually get the nudge in the right direction. Like, yeah, I, I, okay, I'm done going off on Overwatch now. Yeah, we're done with Overwatch. <laughs> we're, done with the, we're done with the Overwatch talk. I said Cause sorry. Because here's the thing: this talk was going to happen regardless. Because when you we we're going to talk about what what are we playing, I'm yeah. gonna, I would have said I always I play, play Overwatch, Overwatch every day, yeah, 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 yeah. and it would have spawned <laughs> from there. Because I always say I play Overwatch yeah. in the show, like, and then it's outside of that, it's whatever else that it is I'm fucking around with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you know it's it, it you know this it's i'm not a very competitive player like that's part of it but the one game that i was i did like and i and i think i've said this before i know i've said this on the podcast was knockout city i loved that game mm -hmm. oh my god knockout city was so good, it was so good. It was so i'm good. so sad that game died yeah. i'm so yeah. sad that game died that, that's the only game that i can sit down and like like i'm not a competitive player but that one i i would i got competitive i don't know what it was but i like and I was it was so it was, good. It was so good. It was so good. Uh well let's let's I think that's a good transition into what we're currently playing. So Cam, I'll start with you. Outside of Over Overwatch, what are you what else are you playing? Uh I've been tweeting about it a little bit recently. Um, but I'm playing Marvel's Midnight Suns. Oh and let, is it good? And let me tell you, that game is phenomenal. Oh okay. like that game that like there's Saying that, like, we as players failed a game isn't a real thing. Mm. It, it, that's not a thing. But that's, like, how it feels when yeah. I play this game where I'm just like, wow, like, we fucked up. Because <laughs> this yeah. game is so good. And it was just poorly marketed. And, you know, even for those that, like, may have known about it, like, the whole card system, I know, turns off a lot of people. And, you know. I'm a JRPG sicko. I love turn-based combat in all its forms. Um, and uh, so while this is a Western RPG, I was just like, this is like hitting all the right notes. It's like, it, it is very Bioware-esque mm. where like, specifically like Mass Effect, like very Mass Effect-esque uh, where you, you know, so basically you are a character. I think it's a brand new character. Um, that they made for the game called the hunter mm. um and you basically like are the son or child you can be you know you can be a woman too um of the antagonist lilith who is like this uh demonic woman mm. person um and she basically like returns like the same time you do basically and you are working with a bunch of Marvel heroes to uh, stop her. And uh, as the game progresses, like you get more party members and uh, you have like a base of operations called uh, the Abbey, which is like this just giant like mansion more or less. Um, and yeah, it's just like, it's a really cool diverse cast. Like, yeah, you have like some obvious A-liners like, Iron Man, Captain America, Doctor Strange, like, um, but then you have, like, some really niche characters that, um, surely, like, people that read the comics will, uh, push back a little bit on, but, like, um, characters that, like, I really didn't, never really engaged with, like, um, Nico from The Runaways, and mm. I was like, and I was like, oh, that, that's the, that's the Hulu show that Marvel yeah. made, yeah. I heard about this, and then, yeah. like, she basically, like, talks about her powers, and, like, 
about her background with the runaways i'm like this sounds really it. like we're like basically like they're all these kids that basically find out that all their parents are super villains mm. and it's just like and then they all get powers i'm like that fucking that rocks yeah. like what that sounds yeah. really cool yeah. i i straight up have a tab for the runaway show like on my computer right now like yeah. i'm gonna watch the show because for the longest time because it got delisted yeah and so i thought that you could only w- watch it if you like bought it on youtube or something like you had to buy it and i was going to do it eventually and i just kind of like did a random search a couple of days ago and i saw it was on the cw for free and i'm like sure cw i'm gonna watch this show now <laughs> yeah and uh yeah so that was really cool and then like um uh magic from the x-men uh Mm -hmm. uh like she creates like portals and she's like the queen of limbo and so i'm like this is so cool like you know uh there's some really really great um stuff here and like i also weirdly enough um because i again i'm not super into i'm more of a dc comics guy um i like cam more and more with every sentence he speaks keep one one of the one of the dlc one of the dlc characters is morbius right and mm-hmm. it's like oh morbius yeah. the movie you know but like you know this actually was gave me the opportunity to get like a more true to comic book depiction of that character i'm like oh morbius is pretty cool like i, I like he's an interesting character yeah. um and so like and yeah and like blade is one of the main characters too like there's like it's just so cool and then like in between missions you just like hang out with people at the abbey and do different activities and they and like it's really well written and Mm. you you know you make choices uh which are like either like light or dark and like depending when you get to a certain like milestone you get like new passive abilities in combat and like uh the combat's really cool because each each um each character kind of has like a specific mechanic that revolves around them right Mm. so like iron man has a thing where uh because when you you have you know you have your hand of cards to do what you want and for iron man all of like all of his cards say if you use one of your redraws where you normally would discard a card to draw a new card it adds another ability on top of the on top of like what you're doing and so like that's really cool um and then like captain america is all about like um taunting enemies while having uh uh block like for the lack of a better term health health block yeah. health so like yeah. uh damage that will be taken before his health is taken and um and uh like storm like storm is the dlc character and her ability is like if you wait till fuse's card next turn it'll become stronger in some way like it can like each character has like some sort of shtick hmm. that just like uh makes them really fun to play Funny enough, Nico, in my opinion, is like the best character in the mm. entire game because like her whole thing is literally like RNG based, but like it's never actually bad RNG if that makes sense. Because mm. like, uh, she she'll have like an ability where it's like the card will do this amount of damage, this amount of damage, this amount of damage, or this amount of damage, and it depends on and it's decided when it's drawn. So, like, it could be one of, like, four different, like, kind of levels of damage. Uh, and then there's, like, one ability where it's, like, oh, she'll do this ability. It does this much damage. But if it kills them, it'll bounce to another person. And if it kills them, it'll bounce to, like, so it's just, and it'll just, like, wipe out, like, people, like, crazy. Um, there, it's a really, really great game. It's a long game. I, I feel like I've probably put in... 45 hours probably and that's that's me trying to do everything along the way because right. i'm just having that much fun and um and i'm i really wanted to try and beat it before i left for sgf but um i don't think i i don't think i'm going to uh the games are split into parts mm. um and i've only i i i'm nearing the end of part two i believe and i don't know how many parts there are but i'm i'm pretty sure there's like i'm pretty sure there's three it feels like getting close to the end game now um and uh yeah it's like it's just really really great i guess it goes it, like it goes on sale for cheap all the time it's now, continually because, like, on sale because because yeah. it just yeah. it just fl- it flopped so hard like yeah. the switch version got canceled which honestly yeah. like i wouldn't like that that's the one kind of gripe with the game is that uh visually 
kind of rough sometimes. It's kind of oh, rough okay. visually sometimes. Um, but that's mainly for the like out of costume models. Like, like the first time I saw Peter Parker, I was like, "Ooh, this looks really bad." <laughs> um, but like as Spider Man, he looks great. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's a really, really great game. Um, I highly recommend it. I like, I like it more than either of the Insomniac Spider Man games. Personally. Wow, wow. But I'm, but I'm also like not the biggest fan of those games either. Like, I think they're great games. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Technically impressive, but like, I, 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 the stories in both those games were like, I had, I had problems with them. And I'm not saying that the story in Midnight Suns is super fantastic but like the rpg the marvel rpg experience is really really great Hmm. of just being able to like create your own character um like interact with these heroes and like you know it's like you're you're you are befriending them and learning more about them in a more intimate way um and the combat is really really cool i really love the combat um so yeah goes on sale all the time and I highly recommend that if you do decide to play it, uh, any of y'all or anyone listening, make sure you buy the season pass or whatever um, along with it, because that's how you get the, you know, you get the DLC characters and like, you can get those DLC characters incredibly early in the game. Mm. And they have like full, full on dialogue and things like that, as if they were meant to be in the game originally if that wow. makes sense wow like like yeah like if you if, if if someone saw me play the game and then i said like oh these are dlc characters they would be like oh shit really like it's it's like that it's really wow. really great i have that game i need to play it i bought it on sale and i just never played it yet but i, I it's do have really it. good you're slacking roger i, I know you would I, never I, see me do something like no, that no never never uh was that backlog mike speaking yeah i think so <laughs> uh you know it's interesting i i wondered why that game didn't do so well and i think my my thought is is maybe because of the marvel avengers game that just came out right before that and a lot of people were soured about that game and then yeah i think marketing just didn't it didn't i mean i knew about this game i was excited about this game but it seemed like a lot of people weren't really familiar with this game and maybe because they did cancel the switch version and it just seemed like it seemed maybe phil maybe uh i it, yeah I it, don't know. it's it's very bizarre because like through my pov was like i that game was marketed like a lot but like never showed the right stuff yeah like that, i what i feel it I, is too as well as like the style of game that it is isn't necessarily going to yeah. appeal to most of the comic book fans that are out there that are just looking for your spider-man your batman your action hack and slash beat em up type of a game yeah and i did not see actual gameplay of that game until like uh the game came out yeah that's true that's a good point i don't think i've seen any game and once i saw the gameplay i was like oh this looks awesome like this like how did i not know this i saw like i like i feel like i saw this game everywhere but i never saw the gameplay and so yeah i think it part of it is that like it just it's not that it wasn't marketed it just wasn't marketed well yeah and then um and then, uh, yeah, the style of gameplay, like the the card combat, like you know, it, it that's a very hit or miss thing. Yep. But as someone who like found, and granted, it's been a long time, so I could feel differently now. But like for someone that found XCOM to be rather complicated, mm. um, when it uh, when I first tried it, I think that this game is very easy to like get onboarded. Like, yes, there are a lot of different terms, but like there's simple terms that you're going to remember what it does. Like, it's like, Oh, quick. And quick means if you kill a person with this card, it doesn't use up the amount of card usage Mm. for, for the turn or, Mm. you know, taunt. Oh, this taunts or chain. Oh, you click how many the number is next to it. And it's a chain attack. Like they're very simple. Like I think accessible terms for that. Like if you're not super into card combat or card gameplay, you should still give it a shot, yeah. in my opinion. I forgot that that was the same developer that made X, X, uh, XCOM. That's, mm-hmm. I totally yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Cam, that you're playing besides Overwatch? Um, Not really at the moment. I think, like, I wanted to finish Midnight Suns again before SGF, and yeah. then I was going to 
start up um i was actually going to finally start up final fantasy 14 i actually so i played a good chunk of it i played the base game and i started the first expansion and i have a bunch of close friends that are like final fantasy 14 pill like to like they are they they can't wait for dawn trail they can't wait to hop in things like that um and i told them like if if i'm being honest with y'all I don't remember jack shit about this game. I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about this wor- the world. I know like one of the characters' names, and that's it. Yeah. And like, and the, and I said like, I think I'm just gonna start fresh. Like, yes, I probably put in like sixty to eighty hours play- beating it the first time, but like, if it's the because it's it's the story, right? It's the story that are that people really love about Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, and so I'm like I you know i want i want to i want to experience the story right yeah and so i'm hoping that uh i'm gonna start that like shortly after i get back from sgf and then as my like single player game i'm going to uh uh start dragon quest 4 okay because i it's been a little bit since dragon quest 3 i i beat it like a, a few months ago um and again, those games, those remakes for those games were really good. I enjoyed all three of them. Um, and I, I've kind of been Dragon Quest pilled where I'm like, that's like kind of the main series that I want to play through right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, outside of that, yeah, like, I mean, I recently played the first uh, Phoenix Wright game and I'm mad I waited that long. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Phoenix Wright fucking rules. Um, Ace Attorney. Uh, I st- and I started this. The thing, uh, the, I started the second one and I kind of bowed out, out of it because the first one just, while I really liked the game for like the vast majority, I think the last case in the first game was like way longer than it needed to be. Mm-hmm. And it kind of burnt me out a bit. I, and uh, I, I think like, I think that's one thing as gamers that like, we really don't want to admit to ourselves when we feel burnt out on a game. And I was just like, I think I need to just like take a break from this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and return to it later because I, I was like two or three cases in on the second game and I just like wasn't really vibing with it the, the way uh, the fir- I did with the first one. Granted, it's because I think the fir- like the first one was better from like go, um, but I also just think that I just when you do so many cases back to back to back, you're just your your brain's just a little exhausted from that that kind of gameplay cycle. Yeah. Um, but I do like that is like my secondary like that I want. I want the year to end and having played all of those games. Um, so nice. that's a, it's a tall task, but I would like to play that entire series by the end of the year. Nice. Uh, I have a game for you. Once you get through those games, if you like that, if you like the Phoenix Wright type games, then you should okay. try uh, uh, death trick, double blind. Uh, it's the same kind of principle that you're trying to solve a crime. It's really good. I liked it a lot. So, Okay. Yeah. Who, who who developed that? Uh, I think Misty Mountains. I think they were called. I think that's who it, it's a it's a it's a two person. Uh, two people made the game. They're from China, and uh, okay. and it, but it takes place in the 1950s, uh, in in America in a, a circus, and a murder happens in the circus. It's really good. It's really good. Uh, and there's a twist in it. It's 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 very good. So, uh, okay, yeah, nine out, nine out of ten on Steam came out last year. Okay, yep, yep. you can okay. go to. Uh, oh, it's can, on Switch too. It is on Switch. You can go to gamerheadspodcast dot com to read our review of that game. Nice is plug. There a, was there a physical re- release of this game? There wasn't. Uh, I okay. wish. I wish. You can also hear our my interview with them too, if you'd like, on gamerheadspodcast dot oh, okay. Cool. Why do you laugh as so, you plug the show? I don't know. It just seems cheesy when I plug my own show. So, um, oh, there's a demo too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's a cool game. The artwork is very good too. Uh, Mike, what have you been playing? Well, let me remember. So, Cam just like you <laughs> with Fortnite. Um, I only play it if the season intrigues me, and this season intrigues me. Because of one person, and that person is Magneto. So I definitely Ooh, yes, yes, yes. So I definitely want to unlock him. The good thing is with Magneto, he's one of the side quest skins, oh, so nice. you don't have to reach like level one hundred to get him. Uh, also, Did, yes, like Snake and 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 uh, Geralt and yep. yeah. 
So it's got also got the Fallout um, armor skin. Which yes, is a, that's yes, a, in the, the Brotherhood of Steel. I was thinking Fall Guys for a second. I just went absolutely brain dead. And I was like, there's a <laughs> I, Fall I Guys thinking, Magneto I was thinking skin the fa- in Fortnite? Oh, well, I was thinking Fall Guy, the movie slash TV no. show. I just, just saw that movie today. The, you did? Yeah. The one I almost had the, the I almost sang the wrong song, but it's the... Fall that's Boy? not the song. Speaking, no, speaking of Magneto, no, did, y'all, did y'all watch X-Men 97? Yes. Oh, you they need didn't. to watch it, Phil. Oh my gosh. Y'all oh y'all need to watch it. I, it's I, so I, good. The, I don't the hype behind that show is real. Like yeah. it's not yep. it's no bullshit. That's yeah, what my yeah, comic yeah. shop guy tells me too, and he knows that I'm not an X-Men fan. He's like, Phil, I'm telling you, you're gonna fucking it. Is love so it. Good. Like, it is so good. It is so good. They actually did such a great job of pulling uh stories from the comic book and putting it into this show. It was so, so good. I will say the one thing so my wife is a huge X-Men fan, and at the end of this at the end of the season there's a character that they introduce that we both really don't like at all. I mean, they reintroduce this character. I'm not going to say who it is, but we're both like, no, not that person again. Is it gold balls? (laughs) Not gold balls. Is it paste pot Pete? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, I would say it, but it would ruin it for both of you. So I don't want to say it. So Um, you'll just have to watch it, I guess. Uh, Cam, it's when you've seen the whole season, right? Yeah, yeah. So when they go back in time, yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, anything else, Mike? Uh, let's see. Well, since we since we mentioned it, played some more Fall Guys. I bought a uh, the Gato Roboto skin since that popped. Oh, up. cool. Oh, that's cool. So I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I so I got into multiverses because I got the uh, battle pass for free since I played the beta. Oh, so nice. the fir- you get the first season for free for free if you tested out the game when it released or when yeah. it was in beta testing. I don't I still don't know how I feel about it yet. Um it's obvious that the developers put a lot of effort into it and the stuff that they have in there are like they did their research. There's a lot of great stuff. The animations look good, the characters look good. I mean it's got Jason Voorhees in it, and you can yeah. unlock the Jason X skin uh, oh, really? as part of the battle pass. Yes, um, and uh, it's, but it's still, it feels, and I'm going to say this as a negative, it feels very free to play. Yep. And it is free to play though, right? That's what I'm saying. But like yeah. when the, the negative term, the negative connotations behind free to play games, this is kind of how it feels when mm. I play it. So like mm. it's, it's. It's very stuttery. Uh, it's very loose. It's like there's characters talking and I can't even hear what they're saying. Really? Uh, because the music, like, is, oh, it's all over the it's, place. Yeah, it's not it's level. Kind of, it's not like, yeah, it's, and the the fighting is okay, but sometimes it stutters. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, it plays like Smash Brothers, but it's hmm. a lot slower. Actually, it plays more like Smash 64 in terms of speed. Hmm. Um, I'm still I, I'm still playing it. Great writing, you know. They like I said, they're putting a lot of work into this, but the, a lot of I wish they would put more work into like the net code or the core fighting mechanic. Um, yeah. A lot of times, I'm just like button mashing and pressing things, and like I'll pre- I'll press an attack twice, and then it'll do the attack, and then do the do the attack again. You know, mm. just because I'm mashing, like yeah, yeah. So and that could be a user error thing, but again, it's not a bad game. Um, but I'm still, I still don't know if I'm gonna keep playing it. Mm. So, okay. uh, other than that, um, there is a review up on GamerHeadsPodcast.com. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that review is a review I wrote for a game called Goliath Depot. Yeah. And man, do I love this game! It I it, this is one of those things. The reason why I'm glad I do this show because Rod, uh, full disclosure, Roger's like, "Hey, Mike, here's a code it's for a game to review," because <laughs> he knew better that if he gave me the name of the game, I'd be like, "I'd never heard of this game before." <laughs> I know. I, I just, gave me, I he just gave me the code. I didn't. He just gave me the code. He's like, "Review this game," and I'm like, "All right." So I got I'm like Goliath Depot, and then I looked at I looked it up, and I looked at the art behind it, and I'm like, 
Oh, this character, this almost looks like a, a like a Mario. Someone took Mario assets and got rid of the mustache. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, Roger, I, this is, I'm I'm, pro- I'm going to be angry with this review, just so you know. And then I got to playing it, and I can't, I could not put it down. It's oh man, I and it, it's a game. It's an arcade game. So basically, what it is, each war there's four worlds. Each world has ten levels. Each level is a, a, a static screen, so just one screen. There's open doors. There's enemies. It's different levels. Up, you know, you gotta. All you have to do is close all the doors, mm. and then get to the exit before time runs out. Every time you close the door, it shoots out like sound waves, it left or right, and it attacks an enemy. If it hits an enemy, uh, the enemy is stunned. You can kick the enemy, uh, and then when you get to the tenth level, you fight a boss. Simple concept, very simple concept. It's it's very arcade, like, and I mean that literally. Like you, if I saw this game in an arcade, I would not know that this was like a home console or you know game. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but then there's they add to it, so there's different things uh, to 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 keep the keep it replayable. Um, you know, there's different power ups that you can purchase. Like there's coins you can pick up throughout the levels. Use those coins to purchase power ups. These power-ups you get to keep forever, but you can only choose one power-up per run. So things like double jump, ju- uh, a dash attack, uh, drop down a level, things like that. And depending on what you want to accomplish, because there's different medals in each world. There's a speed run medal. There's a pacifist medal. There's a um, don't take any damage, which there's uh, there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to get that. Uh, <laughs> right. But if you get all the medals... In, in each world you unlock hidden characters again mm. something i'll never be able to do um but i'm having a lot of fun with it i can see speed runners really having a lot of fun with this the game was a lot of fun and then my son picked up the controller and we were doing uh playing co-op and that just opened up really? a whole new world of fun like nice. he was able to jump in and it, again the controls are, are so simple it's only it's it's jump and close the door those are the those are the two two buttons um i even said in my review i actually uh i like i said i went to the convention and i was gonna sell my um arcade stick but then i'm like this game really feels like an arcade game let me bust out the arcade stick so i plugged it in the switch and i was playing on the arcade i'm not selling this stick i kept it i left it at home yeah so (laughs) and i said thank you for for (laughs) yeah for that now i'm keeping that stick yeah that's cool yeah so that's Goliath Depot. Um, yeah. That's on the Switch, and I think it's also on it's also on PC. Yeah. Uh, and it's only like seven bucks, so which yeah, is like that's really a steal cheap. for that. It, yeah. So if you like those fast-paced like arcade-style games, uh, retro, great soundtrack, everything is. I, I mean, I, I loved it. I gave it an A. And if you're curious about some more details on it, you can go to GamerHeadsPodcast.com and read that review. That's right. And that's all I got. Nice. Phil, what about you? Uh, obviously the show in Overwatch, but outside of that, I have put a little bit of time into Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which I thought was already out, but apparently it's not, and I pre-ordered it. As we alluded to earlier, it is a, well, not really alluded to, but it's a three versus seven. You either play as one of the three clowns or one of the seven humans that are trying to escape the clowns. 15 minute time limit to get the hell out of the area. Um, it's definitely far superior superiorly yeah sure why not let's make that word up uh to friday the 13th where it's not as janky not as putsy not as not as broken as friday the 13th was i know they did ghostbusters since then but friday the 13th is one that sticks in my mind um the maps are really well done the gameplay is pretty well executed i've only hit a couple of minor glitches and mainly it's with things like throwing cocoons as you're trying to speed up going to like the cocoon harvester you can either hang people with the cocoons to spawn the demons that'll help you out if you're a clown. As far as human-wise goes, as always, they don't really give you... They kind of give you a roadmap as to how to escape, but not really. They tell you what you need, but not where the parts are, so then you got to go scavenging. Uh, Weapons are kind of sparse to be found, and it almost makes the clowns feel overpowered, which I know they're supposed to. But again, like with more time, you'll understand where the weapons and the placements and things like that and all the maps are, which will smooth everything out. I think I only hit like level seven as far as my player goes. So, I mean, I'm not super far into it, but I've probably played six, seven matches worth of it. And um, 
it's one of those games where if you've got a crew that you're playing with that are actually communicating, it's going to be a far superior experience to just jumping in with a bunch of randoms, as most of those style of games are. Uh, yeah. I my gripes about the game are super minimalistic, except for the fact that I suck at it. But again, that's just due to the fact of being new. Yes, Mike. No, oh, I'll wait till you're done before I ask my question. Well, now you cut me off, so now I'm done. I know. Okay. <laughs> Good. Then my work here is done. How is the leveling up system? Is it is it similar to Texas Chainsaw or or like what kind of stuff do you unlock by leveling up? Like, is there and are you points? leveling up your? What are you leveling up? Your like clowns yeah. or the humans or both? Yes. Or, yeah, or just your profile. You're unlocking. Yeah. You're leveling up your profile, which will unlock things for both. So, for example, if you're okay. playing as a clown, you unlock a new perk or a new character you can play as. At, I'll say level six, for example. And then at level eight, when your overall profile hits level eight, you'll unlock, say, like a new human or a new perk mm -hmm. or that type, okay. type of a thing. Uh, you get XP for essentially surviving, scavenging things, hanging up the cotton candy cocoons. Like you get a lot of XP in the game, so it's it's pretty generous with it, at least as far as the early levels go. Cool. Is this a Roger game? It's not going to scare you. It's not. In, I okay. mean, it's intense, but not intense for the reasons why you might think it would be intense. Okay. Okay. Like, there's no jump scares or anything like that because it's all PvP. So, like, yeah, there's yeah. nothing that's set up to like make you startled. Yeah. But each of the humans okay. uh, that you unlock do have different characteristics. Each of the clowns that you unlock do have different characteristics as far as like what their powers are. For example, like the the first clown that you unlock after your initial clown, he's uh he's got the the balloon uh the balloon animal dog that he can use to like sniff out where the humans are hiding. You can go and hunt them down okay. with the balloon animal dog and like. Okay. Yeah, so they all have different effects on things. Um, it's pretty well done, and there's four or five different means of escape as far as humans go. Uh, in the last 30 seconds of a match, the brothers that directed the film crash in and open up just like a free-for-all escape spot for the humans, so if you can like make your way to wherever oh, really? they crash through, like you can get out really quick. It's, it's, it's super campy, super cheesy. It's, it, the animation's pretty spot-on. Graphics are pretty spawn on, especially like when I first booted up the main menu screen and like it just shows like the clown faces are just like, oh, man, those look awesome. And I got really excited. <laughs> and I just headed in and started just playing around with it. Cool. Nice. Yeah, it, cool. it's worth playing if you if you like that style of game. There's a word for it, but I don't know what it is. A dead by daylight. Yeah, kind of. I mean, they're all kind of that same vein, but it's like an asymmetrical horror game or whatever is what they call it. I don't know. I, I don't keep up with all the terms that the kids use. Yeah. Cool. Uh, for myself, uh, the games I've been playing, so I got into the 33 Immortals beta. Oh. So. I'm so jealous. Yeah, I was about to say, is that, that a good really or cool. bad or? Uh, no, I, I will play anything that thunder lotus makes moving forward uh because like i talked about it earlier my dad like when my dad passed away uh like right after that happened i played spirit Fair, yeah and that game uh very much uh helped me grieve yeah um and i think that anyone should play that game after a tough like death in your life happens because that like game revolves uh highly around that and yeah. uh does it incredibly incredibly well um and so yeah i just um i was very excited when they like announced 33 immortals last year and i saw that the beta was floating around and i was like dang i, I really want to play that and check that out I, yeah. i'm curious like i'm really curious like how does the whole how how does it feel like the whole 33 player co-op thing yeah, it's it's interesting because you'll go into a world <clears throat> and there'll be different gates. So like you're you're it's so for those that are not familiar, it it's it's isometric. It's a little bit like Hades, a little and Hades esque, I would say. So you enter this world with thirty three people, there's different gates that open up, and only six people can go into those gates at a time. So and then each one of those gates had to be closed before like the boss battle happens in that in that level before you can ascend to the next level and um, so a lot of times i wasn't at the gates to get into one of the gates that opens up um i don't think i don't exactly what the name i think they're called torture chambers or something like that so you're in hell basically and okay. um so when but if you get into those then they if you beat those those torture chamber or those gates areas you get 
uh, there's a chest that opens up and then you get special abilities with that. So, um, and it's, it's a roguelike. So obviously some of those abilities only stay with you for that run. Yeah, I know Mike, not your favorite, but it's really, it's well done. Um, and then, yeah. So then once, once you get all those gates closed, then, then there's an area that opens up and you all have to go, like the whole world starts enclosing on this one area and you all have to go there and, uh, fight us if you don't. It's similar to like Fortnite where they try to get everybody in together. And if you're in that area, you start burning like similar to like the poison mist or whatever. Um, and then when you defeat that, you extend and the the boss that they had was, I think, Satan, I think it was uh, or some kind of dynamic demonic type creature. Uh, I never beat the the boss. It was really hard. Like we got it down to maybe half life, the group that I was with. Um, and then it just did this crash and like killed us all and with its hand and we all died. And I was like, okay, well that was, that was fun. It is really oh. cool though. It, it, they did it really well down. So I'm excited for the full release of it. Um, and there's cosmetics that you can get for your character. There's a cat that can follow you around. So you can unlock a cat that follows you around and you can get different like color skinned for your cats. It's, it's, it's a neat game. And then there's blessings that then allows your character to have, uh, different abilities in the next run. So, like those are the things that are the constants. Those those blessings, and then there's three different weapons you can use: either a bow and arrow, uh, these blades, or uh, like these like little knife blades. And I think the last one is like a sword. I always use the bow and arrow because that just I'm just more of a ranged type player anyway. Um, and that worked really well. So, yeah, it's really it was cool. Uh, it closed. I think today was the last day. So, uh, but I got to play quite a bit of it this past week and. I had a like a good time with it. So uh that one and then the you can uh read my preview of this next game on our site and that is Hive Jump 2 Survivors. Uh so that just came out in early access. Um so that is a Mike knows the game Hive Jump. Um so it is the sequel to it or it, 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 they call it Hive Jump 2. I would say it's like in the same world as Hive Jump. Um, to call it Hive Jump Two, though, is weird because it's such a different game. This this game is a vampire survivors esque type game, whereas the first one is a platformer slash strategy type uh, base builder type game. Um, and so this one's more uh, the vampire survivors. In this game, uh, it it plays really well, and you are a jumper and you have the jetpack. So that's the same as is the first game. That's the one major difference is not only do you shoot different guns and have even like attachments helping you, but then you have this jetpack that you can jump over the enemies and go into different areas. So uh, it's really cool. It's really fun. Uh, and it's really cheap. I think it's like eight bucks. Yes. Bye. If I wanted to read this preview, where would I be able to do that? You can go to GamerHeadsPodcast.com hmm. to read that preview. Well, I'm sorry. What was the name of that site? GamerHeadsPodcast.com. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, the next game I'll talk about is also going to be on Gamerhead's podcast. It's not right now. I'm still I'm still working on my review. Uh, but I also am reviewing the game Hypercharged Unboxed. Uh, that is a uh, it's a defense tower type game where you are playing as a toy and you're being attacked by all these other toys. Uh, obviously, they don't have the rights to like the actual toys right so but they do a pretty good job of making it look like the actual toys you're fighting against it's it's pretty cool so yeah you take well, close enough where you where they don't get sued <laughs> yeah yeah exactly just just close there's there was a and there's fun stuff so like in one of the levels there's it's the kid's bedroom and on the wall there is a there's a poster it says the indies well it's, it's supposed to be like indiana jones right and it certainly looks like an indiana jones poster and then the next one is a poster of a dinosaur that says big fucking dinosaur that's what the movie poster is but the you know fucking is like like starred out uh and there's like a level where it's in the bathroom and uh you like it's fun so you have you have three different areas that you're trying to well i shouldn't say always three most times it's three different areas you're trying to defend uh against uh a swarm of of enemies coming in and it's you and four other, or three other players 
And uh, and if you don't play with, if you don't play online with the other people, you can play solo. And the AI is really smart. It feels like you're actually playing with people. I had to actually check a few times. Am I playing with people? Because the AI was pretty smart. But then in between each round of waves, you get to put up your defense towers around uh, around these things that you're trying to protect. Uh, and they're the hypercharge, the hypercharge cores. And so you can like put up like, and they're all toys, but you can put up like things like a like a castle walls and or Legos and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's a cool game, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. And it's fun. It's more fun when you play online with other people, obviously. Um, but it's enjoyable playing it single player as well. Uh, and it's just a funny, it's a funny game. It reminds me of I don't know if you guys ever did this, but when I was a kid, I would take all my toys and have these huge battles, and it was just like all these toys that were just mix and match. G.I. Joe and, and, you know, He-Man and Battle and, Beasts you know, and Guts. Battle Beasts and, and, you know, Army Men, right? Yeah, all, all those things combined together and they would all fight against each other. I had Knight Rider in there once. I had uh, Michael Knight and Kit come in. They, they finished everybody off because they were, like, way bigger than anybody. So they just kind of drove in and knocked everybody over. But, you know, like, I. Uh- I might uh, it, like it might be like an age an age difference thing. Yeah. But, like I never really, I I I I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what other reason it would be. Or uh-huh. maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just a weirdo. But I didn't really play with toys growing mm. up. Like I like I I think like the closest I played with was like Beyblades. <laughs> like I did. Oh, Beyblades like, I did, are cool. Yeah. Yeah. I did, like I did Beyblades, and then like yeah. I collected like Yu Gi Oh cards and Pokemon yeah. cards. Okay. But I never really like played with like actual figures and stuff like that. Interesting. I, That's um, an age I, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, it's like um, I, I mainly wa- I really just like watch TV. Like I I watch TV. I started watching TV probably I don't want to say probably at a, like uh, too young of an age, but like um, I remember watching like I still remember in my mind like the day that SpongeBob premiered in 1999, mm. and I was sitting on my couch. And I was like. And you know, I I'm a I'm a SpongeBob encyclopedia. Uh, yeah. At least from like when it, you know, during its peak era of sorts. Yep. Um. So, yeah, I just I just like I just thought about. It. I was like, I didn't really play with toys growing. Up. Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think like outside of like Star Wars toys, like toys nowadays, like we don't like there's not as many cool toys as when we were growing up. Like we had so many different types of toys. We had Muscle Men, which were amazing. I still have my Muscle Men. We had G.I. Joe. We had He-Man. You had Battle Beast. We had, uh, instead yes, of... We didn't have any of that. Yeah, I know, well, exactly. I, I know. That's I the thing. We had Transformers. With, like, we had such cool toys. I will argue and say that the toys are cooler, but the marketing is way different, where, like, you didn't have entire yeah, Saturday yeah. mornings that were marketed towards, towards like, the toy lines. Because yeah. that's all Saturday yeah. morning cartoons were, were just advertisements yeah. for toys. Well, that's what all He-Man toys were. Yeah, Like, absolutely. they were totally, like, they convinced the... the they convinced the makers that, oh yeah, well, we're going to come up with this toy line if we come up with this cartoon. Yep. And 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 do you remember they they had these little booklets that were stories of the of the characters. Yep. And it turns out then they just like made all that stuff up on the fly, like just to basically sell like, oh crap, we got to like make sure the show survives. Um, but you're right. Like, think about all the the commercials when we were kids. Like all the toys, like yeah. um, um. Uh, can nothing stop the animal the animal the animal remember like the animal mm-hmm. would cr- like the claws come out oh my gosh yeah it was cool like uh yeah and, and instead of like marketing changed is all that it really is yeah, like yeah more than true. anything else yeah, yeah it's actually interesting like the more you talk about it because like a lot of the kids commercials i got when i was a kid weren't for toys they were for other like kids stuff like, like nerf guns and shit like that yeah nerf guns yeah. uh zoo books yep <laughs> zoo mm. books. um some like just a bunch of things that weren't at, like that weren't toys and so yeah. i'm just like yeah i just think that like i didn't really like i knew what transformers were like i knew like a bunch of those things um mm-hmm. but i just didn't really like play with them myself so see it's interesting because i think that like now because I'm, I'm like watching my kids grow up right and like my son wants to buy transformers Mm-hmm. And I think it's this nostalgia thing that they're trying to tie into the parents that played with Transformers. And they're like, oh, look at you can buy. Tra-. And like, I'm more excited about the Transformers sometimes than my son is. I'm like, we got to get, we got to get Soundwave. Like, why don't we get sound? We got to get, so- it was Shockwave or Soundwave? No, Soundwave, right? Soundwave. Yeah, I think it was Soundwave. And I mean- then uh, 
to, star, uh, to be star fair, you, and... you can't have a Transformers collection without Soundwave. Well, you can't. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like, yeah. I know. You and then, have Soundwave. And I was so jealous. I wanted the, you know, he had a little tape deck. And who was the yeah. good There was the good guy version. He was the red. He was uh, not a different boombox, but he had a lion inside of him. You yep. had a, I don't remember his name though, but I wanted both of those. And then the yeah, Optimus Prime. Um, yeah. And then you had the, yeah, anyway. Uh, but anyway, it's funny because it's, you said you mentioned Beyblades. My kids have Beyblades. When I grew up, I don't know if Mike and Phil, you remember this toy, but there was Spinjas. So it's the yep. same thing, same kind of concept. You had these little ninjas and you spun them and you put them in this arena and you click and they'd spin and slam into each other. Oh, man. And so when my kids got into Beyblades, I'm like, I totally got into it. I'm like, I'm buying my own Beyblade. And I challenge them all the time. It's very funny. Yeah, Beyblade's not the same anymore. But that's also because like I got yeah. exposed to Beyblade through the show. Oh, okay. And like that's they how had it like this... in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. You know, they yeah. had the they had they had this core cast, and then like after the first two shows, they like had like this new protect and I'm like, Oh, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care about this that's anymore. That's so funny. That's so funny. Um because my my son was really into Beyblades the show too, and I I never got into it, but I just wanted to play just for the you know the battling system <laughs> that was fun um but anyway yeah those are the games i'm playing so one thing i want to say before we close out the show is how thankful i am to magic mind last week was another week full of lots of uh, meetings and long days and if it wasn't for magic mind i probably would just get home and crash and like probably not pay attention to those meetings. Um, but thank goodness for Magic Mind because it allows me to focus, stay focused, uh, and continue to do things that I enjoy doing after work, which is creating content for you all and uh, and doing the things I love. So if you want to check out Magic Mind yourself, you can actually go to the show notes. There's a link there. Click on the show notes and uh, click on the link in the show notes. And you can also get Magic Mind uh, through that link at a discounted price. So check it out. That's Magic Mind. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that's all I have for this week. Before we head out, uh, why don't go around and tell people how they can get a hold of us. Cam, how can people follow you on social media? Uh, yeah, you can uh, follow me uh, at Cam Final Mix on Twitter. Um, and that, yeah, that's really where I post all of my uh, updates and things like that. And then I also want to uh, do one thing. So I know that Roger's not going to do it. I want to shout out Roger because I was in some financial trouble earlier this year. And this man was kind enough to donate some money to help me. Aww. And I just wanted to say it on the podcast. Uh, you know, th he did not ask me to do this. I'm doing this out of my own volition. Uh, thank you so much, Roger. Uh, that helped a lot. And um, I, you know, I will appreciate it. And again, if you ever need help with anything, um, I will do my best to to, to help you. So, oh, well, that's very nice. I mean, I'm glad I can help. So um yeah i i, I don't take compliments well so <laughs> i don't know what to say. i don't i don't i don't either i don't either but i'm just i'm just like i got I, you know i just wanted to sh i just wanted to shout you out really oh quick. well I, I appreciate that thank you uh mike how can people find you on social media uh you could just find me at pez guy mike I, yeah, yeah, that's that was. I, I don't have anything heartfelt. I can't follow this. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, how can people find you on social media? I don't have a heart, but you can find follow okay. me at bnow23 on, on the Twitters. Um, and listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us at Gamerheads Pod. You can follow me on Twitter at Nintendraj. You can go to our website, Mike, right? At GamerheadsPodcast.com. You sure can. Yeah. Uh, you can also go check out our YouTube channel where we have every episode of the podcast loaded up there. So I, I would suggest not going to some of the early episodes because they're not great. Uh, Neither of these. Well, that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but you can go listen to all those episodes out there. 
Cam, thank you so much for joining us this week. It was really fun having you on the show. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, absolutely. I hope I didn't ramble uh, no, too much because I, I, I tend to do that. Um, <laughs> and so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but yeah, always glad to come back if you ever want me on. Awesome. And uh, yeah, this was fun. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for joining us this week. Thanks for having me. And Phil, thank you so much for joining us this week. Always a pleasure and nice to meet you, Cam. Nice to meet you. Both. And listeners, uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to give us a listen. If you want to leave us a review, we want to hear what you have to say about the show. Uh, so leave us a review and we'll read your reviews on air. The other thing I'll just uh, also plug here, you may notice in the show notes, there's a little link that says send us a text. You can actually send us text messages now, too. And we'll read those on the air, too. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? But that is, that is a true, that's a true statement. Um, I like it. <laughs> with, with that, everyone, stay safe and game on, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. So long. Take care. <laughs>